Hey guys, Mike here and welcome to another Ask FM that I'm going to be doing for this channel, which I'm going to be answering your subscriber questions. And if you want to ask me a question, don't forget to check out my Ask FM, which will be down below in the description. Now, let's get into these questions. First off, we'll start with the question of the day. What is your favorite restaurant and where is it located? Well, in my town, there's a restaurant called Rio Bravo, which is a Mexican restaurant, and it's very good. It's probably my favorite restaurant overall. Every time I go there, I always have a good meal. I don't even really like uh, Mexican food for the most part, but I mean, there they have just great food, so I really like it there. Am I completely dumb, or is it a writing error that if Plant Vegeta was nearby Earth, someone should have come earlier because Earth is a healthy planet? And if it was a far away, how should Goku make it as a baby towards Earth? Yes, the Saiyajin travels are strange, but I think the Earth should be near Vegeta from Super Gogito. Um, I don't think that they're close by at all. I think that they might even be, you know, on completely separate sections of the galaxy. They could even be on different galaxies. No one knows. I mean, they imply or outright state that the Saiyan uh, ships actually use cryogenic freezing or a special kind of sleep when they send someone to another planet. And they move way faster than the speed of light, obviously, considering, you know, how long it took for Vegeta and Nappa to get from where they were to uh, the Earth. So, um, I would definitely have to say that they're not very close at all, so it's not really a plot hole. Okay, I don't like GT, but if Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta could only hold the fusion for 15 minutes instead of the full 30, what do you think that time would be for Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan as Gogeta? I have seen that ass, and I think they would be able to hold the fusion for the whole time. Um, I don't think that there's anything that would really imply that God Key somehow diminishes the time that uh, Fusion has, but for Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, I don't remember if they actually said it diminishes the time. I wouldn't be surprised though. I mean, Super Saiyan 4 takes up a lot of energy just like Super Saiyan 3, if I remember correctly, so uh, I mean, I would assume that Gogeta as a Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan would be able to hold it longer just because there's nothing ever said that they would have any problems holding it for any extended period of time. I mean, Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan doesn't seem to have the problems that Super Saiyan 3 or Super Saiyan 4 has, so even though I would say Super Saiyan 4 at this point, you know, at least the people who have it might be stronger than the gods, uh, in general, I would say that Gogeta could hold it longer. But uh, that doesn't mean he would win. Boss Rabbit from Dragon Ball can be every care every villain. So do you think it's true? Uh, sure. Doesn't Baba have the power to kill Raditz, Nappa, Vegeta, Freeze, and possibly sell him Boo because she is the boss of the devil? Who knows? The devil might beam. So why does she never do anything? Um, probably because she doesn't know the devil might be and she can't kill someone. She's not physically strong, so she wouldn't stand any chance against them. She's mostly just someone who can tell the future or can see things and can bring people back from the dead. I don't think she could do really much else. Uh, those are helpful, obviously, but uh, no, I don't think she could stand any chance in a fight. Otherwise, she would have just did something. Who would win, Broly and Broly's second coming, or Gotenks, Super Saiyan 2 or 3? I think Gotenks easily would win that. I mean, they kind of imply that Gotenks, in his uh, in his Super Saiyan form after the uh, you know the time he spent in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber, is stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and I think Super Saiyan Goku would easily beat Broly, so Super Saiyan 2 and 3 would dominate him pretty effortlessly. Who gave Future Trunks his sword? Could it be the one from Piccolo to Gohan? Of course, Tapion doesn't make sense. No, Tapion doesn't really make any sense. Um, I don't think they ever say. It's possible that someone from Capsule Corp made it for him, like Bulma, or it's possible that he found it, you know, trying to save one of those cities. I mean, he doesn't seem to have it as a child, you know, when we look back at the manga, so it's likely that he either got it or found it. You know, sometime when he was more, uh, like, towards an adult as a teen, late teen, but, uh, I mean, we have no real idea. Uh, but yeah, the Tapion thing is just a movie and never made any sense whatsoever. Even though, for the most part, Fusion Reboot, I mean, even for the most part, uh, Wrath of the Dragon could pretty easily fit into the series. Pui versus Pui Pui. I'm asking this question because I believe Pui Pui is as strong as a Namek Saga character. 
Um, I think Pui Pui would effortlessly be Kui. I think that Pui Pui is a lot stronger than people act. I mean, I think that he, for all we know, could be in the millions power level. I mean, I wouldn't put him anywhere near Frieza, obviously, considering that base Vegeta easily beat him. But I think that he's a lot stronger than people give him credit for. People just take that, you know, 10 times gravity thing out of context. Pui Pui didn't know how powerful his opponents were. He didn't know that they trained in gravity. He didn't know that they weren't even, you know, human. So he just made a lot of assumptions with that. But I don't think that just because he did 10 times gravity or anything like that, that makes him, you know, particularly weak. Uh, the thing is, like, if he was that weak then Vegeta doing any sort of attacks on him like he did would have like just obliterated him just with a single punch, you know what I mean? Like, I know that Vegeta wasn't trying, but I don't think Vegeta was holding back to the point where Pui Pui would have to be in the hundreds of thousands or something. Like, Pui Pui, I mean, he could have killed him effortlessly in either case, but I don't think so. What if Yamcha trained as much as Tien all throughout Dragon Ball? Um, Tien would probably still be stronger, he just seemed naturally stronger and far more talented. I mean, in Dragon Ball, when they introduce Tien, they talk about how he's actually, you know, this uh, prodigy. And considering that he was able to learn the uh, evil containment wave just by watching Master Roshi do it once, uh, even though Roshi obviously did that when he watched Amutaido do that, the fact of the matter is that I don't think he would ever be able to catch Yamcha unless Yamcha stopped training or Tien used like better means of training, like the uh, gravity chamber. Because, I mean, Tien was just uh, just way too above him for the most part. I mean, he was equal to Goku, who was just vastly above Yamcha at that point. So, yeah, I think Tien wins. Has there ever been a scene from Dragon Ball that made you choke up or even cry? I got really choked up by the scene where Vegeta attacked Cell after Cell killed Trunks or almost killed him. He actually did kill him, yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, like, yeah, I mean... The, the scene I, that definitely, for me, is the most that I do kind of get choked up at is the uh, scene where Vegeta dies. Like, I remember watching it for the first time as a kid, and I was just like, you know, that that was hard. <laughs> when he, uh, when he's on the ground finally dying, and, you know, he's crying and begging Goku to kill Frieza and everything. I mean, that was, that's probably the saddest moment in the series, or at least one of them. I know that Vegeta's final atonement's really sad, but, I mean, he's not, like, crying and being that position that he was where he's completely helpless at that point. You know, Vegeta went out, like, fighting, you know, when he uh, killed Boo, he tried to kill both of them at the same time, even though he knew he was going to hell. I still think that, uh, the scene where Vegeta dies is, uh, in the first place, is the saddest scene in Dragon Ball for the most part. At the Cell Saga, when Super Perfect Cell killed future Trunks, could Vegeta have turned into a Super Saiyan 2? Um... There's a lot of speculation about Vegeta's power at that point in the series. Uh, Super Jane has actually pointed out something that's really good, is that in the manga, for example, uh, Vegeta is not drawn the same way as he was, uh, say, you know, uh, in the anime. And the thing is, in the manga, they actually draw Vegeta to look like a full-powered Super Saiyan, like Goku and Gohan as opposed to, you know, the uh, Ascended form. You know, I think they draw Trunks the same way, but in the anime, they bulk them up again for some reason, maybe to try and set Goku and Gohan apart. But considering that Vegeta was very possibly a full-powered Super Saiyan, I think he could have gone Super Saiyan too. I just think that Toriyama wanted it to be about Gohan at that point, but I do kind of wish that sometimes that maybe he went Super Saiyan 2 when Cell was so powerful that he and Gohan need to team up to stop him. But, I mean, that's not what ended up happening, I guess. So, I think he might have been able to, but we'll never know. Was Super Vegito the strongest character at the end of the Majin Buu saga? Without question, he was vastly above everyone. I mean, Gohan was the strongest character before uh, Boo absorbed him, and considering that Vegeta was able to just effortlessly destroy and dominate Boo, I mean, he clearly was way above everyone, you know. And Boo had the most powerful characters in the series at that point absorbed into him, and he had no chance whatsoever against Vegito, so yeah, uh, Vegito definitely wins. 
do you think that Vegeta is going to turn Super Saiyan 3 in Dragon Ball Super Episode 7? Well, I kind of hope he does. It'd be really cool. And I always had this kind of pet theory that perhaps Toriyama, because he did say in an interview that he had actually forgotten that Super Saiyan 3 existed, or he thought Super Saiyan 2 was Super Saiyan 3. So I thought that maybe he actually drew or wrote Vegeta to turn into a Super Saiyan 3, but he thought it was 2, so he said 2. I don't know. But, um... You know, he's. I think he said that he thought Super Saiyan 2 was the one with long hair, so that could explain a lot. But if he does turn it in uh, Super Episode 7, I would like that. That'd be pretty cool. It would uh, add more sense to the reason why he surpassed Goku, even though I don't think he need to have it. But uh, it would also kind of validate that theory in my eyes. So yeah, I mean, I hope he does. Tell me, does Goku's train contribute as much to how he has become a, as a fighter, or does his genetic makeup contribute more? He is so much stronger than any full-blood Saiyan is shown to be. Is he special? Has Goku won the genetic lottery, so to speak, assuming other Saiyans trained? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a kind of idea throughout Dragon Ball in general that Goku is special. He's always depicted as being special and above everyone else in Dragon Ball when he was supposed to be a human, and then Z when he's a Saiyan. I mean, he just... I feel like a lot of it, though, is the way that he's trained. Even though at this point, I would think that Vegeta's base should be stronger than Goku's. Um, the way that Goku is trained, he's gotten all these different magical boosts. He trained with King Kai. He's always training, you know, he's almost always training with someone or under someone, as opposed to, say, a Vegeta who trains on his own for the most part. And uh, so, yeah, I think that it's a combination of, you know, him training under very special means that allowed him to get the way he is, as well as, uh, you know, him just seeming to have something genetic to him that allows him to surpass even Vegeta, who's a elite and who should have an easier time getting power or becoming stronger than Goku. But, I mean, it's really up in the air, I guess. It's just, we don't really know a lot of these things. It's just we have to imply them or infer them from what we see. Future Trunks, Healthy Goku, Vegeta, and Piccolo with the powers they have during the 1920 fight versus 1718 future timeline. My opinion, the Z Warrior, since Trunks mentions that he's able to hold his own versus the two on his timeline. Um, I never understood what they were trying to say with Trunks saying that. That never made any sense. Because really, uh, when we go by the manga, when Trunks only, Trunks only seems to fight them once in the manga, we never see it. But it makes no sense at all that he could have held his own whatsoever against the future androids from his timeline. And the reason for that is because of the fact that Trunks is said by Bulma to be exactly the same power as Gohan. And as we know, Gohan in the manga only ever fought 17. And 17, when he actually fought Gohan and damaged him and took away his arm and stuff like that, was using less than 50% of his power. And then when 17 didn't hold back, he effortlessly killed Gohan. Although, we didn't see the fight, but we know that he killed Gohan probably without too much effort, considering the way that Gohan looked at the time, and considering how shocked Gohan was that 17 only used half his power. Um, obviously, the anime tries to make Gohan look so much stronger than he is, which he clearly isn't, but... Uh, yeah, I, I really don't think that that ever made any sense. The same, you know, with Trunks trying to say that the current androids are stronger, he has no idea of how to gauge that, considering that the future androids never could have used their full power against Trunks. Uh, so, I mean, even though it, maybe it makes sense for the Z fighters to be able to beat them, I still think that they'd be weaker individually. So, how much weaker is a good question. Um, arguably a good amount weaker, but we really don't know. I don't think that future Goku... I mean, I don't think that present timeline Goku after the training or Vegeta would probably be strong enough to beat either of them individually. So, uh, maybe with tactics, maybe another way, but I really don't know. I, I don't think 19 and 20 were even close to even the future uh, androids, so it's really hard to uh, to tell in that case. Do you think Super Saiyan 2 Goku and Majin Vegeta could have defeated Fat Buu if Vegeta wouldn't know Goku, no Super Saiyan 3? Um, I don't think so, and the reason why is because even though it might make some sense to a degree, uh, and Vegeta did deal a lot of damage to Buu, it's just like, no matter what Vegeta did to Buu, he always came back, even after he sacrificed himself to try and kill Buu, and um, 
the thing is that Vegeta and Goku pretty much both said that numbers are not enough to beat this Boo, to beat this guy, because he's so powerful and because he can regenerate. Um, I mean, obviously Goku then turns Super Saiyan 3 and says he can beat Boo, but Super Saiyan 3 is four times the strength of uh, Super Saiyan 2. So, I mean, if we say that Boo was twice as strong as Vegeta, then Goku and Vegeta would only be able to really match him at his full power. So, honestly, no. I, I really don't think that uh, they could have beaten him. I think that he would just kept coming back over and over and regenerating. Even though Goku says he could have beaten him as a Super Saiyan 3, if they teamed up with the two of them as when it was a Super Saiyan 3 and Majin Vegeta, they could have definitely beaten Boo. But aside from that, no, I don't think they could have beaten him. What are five things you would change about GT? Um... One, Goku isn't a kid. Two, the characters we actually like and care about go to space. So, you know, Goku, Vegeta, and Gohan, maybe Piccolo, you know, other characters like that. People aren't just left out so that, you know, we could see Trunks, who, I mean, Trunks is alright, but, uh, Videl, I mean, Cheech, uh, Pan, no. I mean, Pan was incredibly annoying. She just, another thing would be to give her a lot less screen time. You know, she should have been a much minor character. I mean... We really should have had uh, those Saiyans, the main characters, maybe Piccolo too, just go to space. But, uh, you know, it would have been cool too if maybe Piccolo had a power to find the Dragon Balls instead of them using a radar, you know. Uh, but, I mean, obviously they're trying to invoke the whole Dragon Ball S theme, but really, I mean, this is a sequel to Z. You can't really go back, you can't put the genie back in the pot, as they say. So, those two things... Um, Obviously, I would change the kind of movie dramatic pacing and the way that Toei writes stuff because the fact of the matter is whenever I watch GT, I just usually yell at the TV the entire time, why the hell don't you turn into a Super Saiyan? Because, uh, really, I mean, if they just turned into Super Saiyans, they'd be able to beat everyone in that series effortlessly for the most part. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. It's clear that Toei is just holding back without caring about logic for the sake of drama, and it's really stupid because it ruins the drama. Um, you know, just retweak everything, and, uh, you know, this, the Shadow Dragon Saga, you know, make it so that only, make it so that more than Goku and Pan are going and being these dragons while everyone just waits at home and does nothing. I mean, there's just a lot of things you could change, and five things really doesn't cover it, but I think there's a lot of ways that they could have improved GT to make it better. Assuming that GT is an alternate timeline where Battle of Gods and Resurrection of F never took place, do you think that GT tier characters would be stronger, weaker, equal to the God tier characters? I mean, even if they did take place, I think that there's a lot of evidence to suggest that GT characters could still be stronger than uh, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F characters. Um, we don't know how much the multiplier for Super Saiyan God or Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan is, and we don't know how much stronger you know, Goku is in his base when he's fighting Frieza, um, but the thing is, like, Super Saiyan Gods, uh, Super Saiyan, you know, even if it's, you know, 4,000 times, like, which many people think that Super Saiyan 4 is, they would still probably be weaker than Goku, uh, as a Super Saiyan 4 and Vegeta, because the fact that, um, Goku in GT you know, is probably just as strong or stronger in his base than Super Saiyan 3, considering that he said Rildo is as strong in his first form than Boo, um, and Goku then dominated him in his base. So that would have to imply that he's at least at that strong, so that'd mean that Goku would be like 4,000 times stronger than Super Saiyan 3 as a Super Saiyan 4. Um, so I really doubt that Super Saiyan God is like... Uh, that much stronger, like 16 or 160,000 times or whatever it has to be the base. Um, so, yeah, I really think that in the end, uh, GT characters could very well be stronger than uh, the current timeline, and they haven't really shown anything to suggest that they're not Are there any types of DBZ fans that you find annoying? Well, if you watch my uh, is probably that strong video and then you look through the comments I think you'll be able to tell pretty easily why do you cast a black guy for Piccolo and Kami um I just think that black actors suit them well I think that they're you know they're very you know there's certain actors I picked that are very good and I think that they fit the role very well there's nothing you know race oriented at all it's mostly just you know this is who I think would fit the role this is who I think would look like Piccolo and Kami 
I think Morgan Freeman would be a great commie, and I think Idris Elba would be a great Piccolo. And that's about it. Which one is canon? Uh, Battle of Gods, a revival of F, or Dragon Ball Super retelling? Um, probably Super at this point, but, I mean, so far, I still like Battle of Gods and Resurrection F. Uh, so, honestly, I would just say at this point... You know, it, it doesn't really matter. At the, at, they're basically the same story, so who really cares? It's Canon is just something that doesn't really matter in the end. Um, I think it's just you make your own canon. That's pretty much it. I mean, in the, at the end of the day, just like whatever you like and dislike whatever you don't like. I mean, who cares? Toei doesn't even use the word canon, and uh, most of us probably shouldn't even do that either. Uber Shaw Volk. How is that related to Dragon Ball? This is German. Overall, the German manga slash dub is very accurate, but not every time. Super Gogito. Um, I haven't read it or seen the uh, German dub, although I do love the scene where Super, uh, Perfect Cell gets blasted by Vegeta, and he goes, Oh, shit! Which, I mean, makes perfect sense. I mean, that's what he should have said, considering he would have got his ass killed. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'll take your word for it. Maybe I'll watch it someday. I... I'm kind of curious to do that. Okay, um, I'm going to answer three more questions. What if Frieza couldn't be drunk? Maybe for his race, alcohol isn't a poison. From uh, Super Gogeta. Um, well, uh, maybe it isn't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, maybe he can't get drunk. Who, who really knows? I mean, for all we know, uh, the stronger you get, it's harder to get drunk. Like, Captain America can't get drunk because his metabolism is so high. I mean, that kind of sucks for him, I guess. Harold, for how many years would an average human have to train to reach your muscle level? Well, um, I'm not Harold, but I'll have to say that, uh, it's kind of like, like the difference between Goku at Super Saiyan 3 and Super Saiyan 4. I could spend my entire life training and I can never be that big. Although, at least I can fit through doors and don't have to live in the garage, Harold. <laughs> He's probably going to hurt me now for saying that. And this is going to be my last question. Um, I think Vegeta from Revival of F in his base form is stronger than Buu Han from GT Goku base at normal Super Buu. I think Vegeta would win. Who do you think would win and why? Um, we don't really know how strong they are in their base. Again, it's really hard to tell. I think that it, you know, it seems to be implied that they would probably be stronger than, like, Kid Buu in their base, considering just how ridiculously strong they are. Like, Goku could take the super ridiculously powered up Frieza at that point, um, just in his base without too much trouble. I mean, he could be Super Saiyan 3 levels, he could be far stronger. We really don't know. Um, it's very possibly stronger than GT Goku in his base. Uh... And obviously normal super mode. I could argue. But, hmm. I mean, it's they're implied to be stronger than Gohan at that point, who's in his base. And I would have to think that Sashimi is stronger than Perfect Cell. I mean, to be able to take, you know, to be able to do that much damage or, you know, fight that well with Piccolo, where it seemed like Sashimi kind of had the advantage. Um, and, and Gohan kind of one-shot him, which I don't think Vegeta or Goku would have any problem doing. Um... So, yeah, I feel like they're very arguably above or around the level of Buhan at that point. It's just, that's just such a massive leap in power. It's just really hard to tell, but, uh, very arguable. But that's been another Ask FM that I'm going to be doing for this channel. Don't forget to check out this Ask FM in the description and uh, ask me some more of your questions because I'd really like to hear them. Also, don't forget to tell me your own thoughts in the comments section, what you thought of this video and uh, what your thoughts on are on some of these questions and, of course, the featured question in the title. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as I always say, stick around because there's a lot more to come in the future. <laughs>